All right. Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh, Shem, Ba'ashem, Ba'ashem, Yahweh, being the name of Heavenly Father, meaning He is, He exists. Ba'in, Ba'ashem, name, Yahweh, Shai, meaning the name of Holy One Son, meaning He delivered, He saves, or Ba'ashem, Holy Spirit. Double honors unto the apostles, the great most of the world. Peace, blessed, and left Israel. Shalom, and above all. Back in on the list of the spirit of power of Yahweh by Shema Shai. Law willing, this video was edifying. Uh, this is just an exhortation. Okay. You know, as we uh, continue to grow in the faith, you know, we're going to go through certain obstacles and adversities in the truth, man. Part of the obstacles and adversities is uh, amongst the brotherhood, you know, and the camaraderie of the Akim. All right. And, you know, you want to always make sure that you're treading lightly amongst brethren. You know, uh, there's a saying where it says a familiarity breeds contempt. So you want to always uh, have that level of respect and you never want to get too comfortable around brothers, you know, to where the point where you get so comfortable around a brother where you might offend. OK, because at the end of the day, you know, you might not mean any harm or any malicious intent with the way you're conducting yourself, but you still want to make sure that you're not indirectly or directly offending a brother with by the way that you move, man, okay? Even if you don't mean it no type of way. And even though Yahweh Bashmashai might have mercy on you concerning the circumstance, you know, why even put yourself in, in, in that predicament, man? You know, like the scriptures say, go not in the way wherein thou mayest fall, okay? So if you see a certain circumstance or a certain situation where you can see it could be a potential rocky situation, man. Okay, the best thing to do is avoid it. Scripture say, a prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. So we don't want to be simple. We want to hide ourselves from the potential danger, all right, of transgression against Yahweh Bash All right, and a part of transgression against Yahweh Bash Mashai could be transgression against your neighbor, man. You know? So I want to go ahead and just grab a couple precepts that I had through the spirit and Lord Willis video is edifying. This is uh, Proverbs 18 and verse 19. It says, a brother offended is harder to be one than a strong city. And their contentions are like bars of a castle. Man. All right, so a brother offended is harder to be one than a strong city. Man, if you truly offend a brother, man, it could be harder for you to reconcile with that brother than you trying to take over a strong city, man. Okay? And at the end of the day, you know, when you're amongst Akim, there's a certain way you ought to deal. Okay, like it says in uh, Proverbs 18 and um, verse 24, it says, A man that hath friends must shoot himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother, man. That's right. So, you know, when we're amongst the brethren, all right, our friends, because if I'm not mistaken, the word friend goes back to brother, okay, or companion, you know. We have to show ourselves friendly, man. We got to show ourselves upright on the behalf of Yahweh Bashan Shai amongst the brothers, man. And we got to make sure that we're setting the right example within our own actions and our own conduct, but also how we deal amongst each other, man. Okay. Um, And like, you got to think about it too. You got to look at every brother like Yahweh Shai, man. So how you would treat Yahweh Shai is how you would treat a brother. All right. From the greatest brother to the camp to the least brother in the camp. Every brother has a portion of the Lord's Holy Spirit. Every brother has a portion of Yahweh Shai. So you have to understand that, you know, you ought to you ought you ought to always tread lightly because you don't want the Lord to um, you know, you don't want the Lord to to judge you or to destroy you because you offended one of his little ones, man. All right. This is um Matthew 25, starting at verse 34. Then shall they say. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee, a stranger, and took thee in? or naked and clothed thee, or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall enter and say to them, 
early as saying to you, and as much as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Okay, right. So how you deal amongst the brothers, whether you do something good or bad, you've done it unto Yahweh Shai, man. You gotta always remember that. Speaking to my first and foremost. Oh, so you go so so tread lightly. Okay, give brothers that respect that 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 is deserved through the spirit, you know. Let me get this preset real quick. This is uh first Thessalonians chapter five, starting at verse twelve, and we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves, man. Okay, that's how it's supposed to be. You know, you gotta know the men which are laboring among you, man. Your fellow soldiers, your fellow comrades, man. And we're supposed to be at peace amongst ourselves, man. But you can't be at peace among yourselves if you're not treading lightly amongst brethren. If you're if you're uh, uh, being bold, you know, and, and by you being bold and you quote unquote being yourself and getting comfortable, that could rub a brother the wrong way, man. Okay, because you also gotta understand that brothers got different uh, backgrounds. Brothers have different walks of life, you know. So just because you might handle a certain situation in a certain way or a certain circumstances a certain way doesn't always mean that a brother's going to handle it the same way man you know brothers have their own minds too okay you know one thing for certain that you know brothers have their own point of view and sometimes brothers don't always see eye to eye but one thing we do see eye to eye on is the doctrine okay and we should also see eye to eye on how we deal and how we will show respect amongst each other man today because you know each brother has a portion of Yahshua's spirit. Okay? So you want to make sure that you're still treading lightly, man. All right? Tread lightly. You know, and, and a lot of this stuff really is, is is really stuff that could be small stuff that just could be avoided, man, if you just move with more fear amongst brethren, man. You know, because you got to have a fear of the Lord's men, too. Not that you fear men, but you fear Yahshua's shy. Okay? And you know that those are the Lord's men. All right, scripture speak about how the people feared Joshua as they feared Moses. The people feared Samuel. You know, they feared Yahweh Shai. They feared King David. Okay, so you got to be mindful of this type of stuff, man. This is uh, Sirach or Ecclesiastes 22 and verse 20. It says, Whoso casteth a stone at the birds, fray of them away. And he that upbraideth his friend, breaketh friendship, man. Yeah. How you talk to brothers, you know, you upbraiding brothers and stuff like that. You could break a friendship like that, man, because, you, you know, being disrespectful and stuff like that. OK, it says, though thou drewest a sword at thy friend, yet despair not for there for there may be a returning to favor. If thou hast opened thy mouth against thy friend, fear not for there may be a reconciliation except for upbraiding or pride or disclosing of secrets or a treacherous wound. For for these things, every friend will depart, okay? So certain things, you know, you, you could burn a bridge with a brother, man, okay? And that could be unprofitable on your end, on your behalf, for your walk, man, okay? And that could also be a gateway and a portal for more demons to mess with you just because of the what you did wrong. So now your spirit is not at the potential that it could be because you did something that was off that could have been avoided if you tread lightly, you know? And now you got to deal with the repercussions of it, man. Okay? A brother offended is harder to be one than a strong city, man. So so knowing that, last thing you want to do is offend a brother, man. Okay? And vice versa. If a brother offend you, you got to, uh, you know, deal among the brother accordingly. Okay? You know, if, if a brother rub you the wrong way, you know, talk to that brother, man. All right, have a communication with each other. And that's another thing, too. We ought, we ought to have communication with each other, man, because a lot of things can be avoided if we just communicate with one another, man. Let me get the pre circle quick. And some stuff is he said, she said, believe it or not. Okay? Sometimes that happens. And really, you know, a, a brother might not be he said, he said, or she said. A brother might not tell you something that another brother said. But sometimes it'd be your own mind telling you something or making you think something that a brother might have said or have done or making you overthink, man. That's another thing, too. You know, you want to make sure that you're not getting too caught up in your thoughts, man, and in heaviness, you know? You don't want to overthink too much, man, because that can make you 
uh, a situation and circumstance and, and, and blow it out of proportion way bigger than what it really is, man. And here it is, that brother, in his mind, he chilling. He thinking, you know, everything's suave. Meanwhile, you're looking like, damn, I don't know about that brother, man. Damn, you know, I don't know if he's going to forgive me or this, that, and the third. You know, and that's and Satan plays off of that. F Satan feeds off of all that negative, negative energy, man. Okay, this is uh, Sirach Ecclesiastes team, and um, verse six. I'm gonna skip around though, Lord willing. It says, "He that can rule his tongue shall live without strife, and he that hated babbling shall have less evil." Man, right? So if you can rule your tongue, you can rule your spirit, you can rule your actions amongst brothers. You're going to have, or people in general, you're going to have less strife. You're going to have less evil. You're going to have less bad times, man. Okay? Because you know how to rule your spirit. And a part of ruling your spirit is not saying certain things that can potentially offend someone or rub someone the wrong way, man. Okay? I'm going to skip down to verse uh, 13. It says, admonish a friend. It may be he hath not done it. And if he have done it. That he do it no more. Yeah, admonish a friend. Okay, you know, you don't, you don't gotta off rip, you know, rail on a brother about a circumstance, man. You could admonish a brother, man. Let me get this real quick, Lord willing. Um, this is a uh, Sirach Ecclesiastes nineteen. Oh, I'll read it through. Okay, Sirach Ecclesiastes nineteen and thirteen. Admonish a friend. And maybe he have not done it. And if he have done it, that he do it no more. So, you know, if a brother might have done a certain circumstance to rub you the wrong way, you know, you talk to that brother, you admonish him. Let's go into that word admonish just for edification's sake. Bear with me, Bob. Sure. All right. Okay. The word here is admonish. Admonish. It says it goes back to the Latin admonere, urge by warning. Okay. To urge by warning. So you pretty much giving a warning, man. Let's get another one. Admonish the verb mid 14th century. Admonish then to remind, urge, exhort, warn, give warning. Okay, and the scriptures speak about warn them that are unruly. Okay, so you know, if a brother's getting unruly, and he might offend you or rub or potentially rub another brother the wrong way. Okay, you want to make sure that we're all holding each other accountable. We're all provoking each other onto good works, man. So part of provoking each other onto good works is holding each other accountable, man. You know, and demanding. Okay, now everything's through the spirit, don't get me wrong, things through order. But you should all you should uh hold brothers to a standard, you know, to, to demand the best out of them, you know. And vice versa, they should do the same to you. And that's provoking each other onto good works. Now, you also have to keep in mind, we all have our own portion, okay? We all have our own lot, so you have to know the fine-tune between that. But we should all be in the spirit of holding each other accountable, okay? You know, trying to bring out the best out of each other, okay? And a part of doing that is admonishing one another, you know, warning a brother or, or correcting a brother about something that may have potentially been handled the wrong way or could be handled better. OK. So it says remind, urge, exhort, warn, give warning, you know, urge, encourage, warn, bring to mind, remind, warn, advise, urge. OK, so pretty much to to give a warning. All right. Now it says Sirach Ecclesiastes 19. And verse 14, it says, Admonish thy friend, it may be he hath not said it, 
or if he and if he have that he speak it not again admonish a friend for many times it is a slander and believe not every tale and guess what who guess who tries to slander the most man the spiritual demon satan okay satan's gonna try to slander another brother in your mind you gotta also meditate on that too i've been meditating on that lately if you ever try to if, if that demon ever hops on you to make you think negatively towards a brother or make you and, and i'm speaking about a brother who's in good standing okay a brother who you know is sincere a brother who you know is diligent okay on fire for yabash mashah who's sincere about serving the lord if a demon ever tries to hop on you to make you think negative or evil towards that brother rebuke that okay rebuke that and also pray for that brother man because you never know what that brother might be going through you know, and, and Satan could really want to sift that brother out real bad because that brother's probably a pivotal, a pivotal character in in the Lord's movie, so to speak. You know, in a good sense. So Satan, he's gonna try to do whatever he can to throw him off his purpose. And guess what? He, he's gonna bring as many as many as he can down with him. So he'll try to put a spirit on you to make you look at that brother funny or make you feel negative or evil towards that brother, man. But you got to learn to rebuke those spirits, man. Okay. And if you feel like there's a demon trying to hop on you to be at odds with a brother, to get, to have an evil eye towards a brother or anything like that, you got to know off rip that that's not of the righteousness. Y'all about to shy, number one. And two, you got to know, all right, you know, maybe saying really want to get that brother out the faith. Let me pray for that brother, man. Maybe that brother's going through something or saying might be battling with him. Let me pray for that brother, man. You know, and pray for yourself, too, that, that you be protected from those thoughts, man. Okay? Sirach so Ecclesiastes 19 and uh, verse 16, it says, There is one uh, that slippeth in his speech, but not from his heart. And who is he that hath not offended with his tongue? Right? And that's another thing, too. You got you to be merciful, man. You can't act like... You know, you, you've always been on point with your tongue and you've never said anything that was wrong, man. So if a brother says something that might have been wrong or, you know, he slipped with his speech, but not from his heart. OK, you know. Learn to forgive him, bro. That's another thing, too. We have to be we have to practice being merciful to one another, man. All right. This is a scripture say, let us do good unto all men, especially those of the household of faith, man. So we should try to be at peace with all men to the best of our abilities, especially with the men of Yahweh, Bashem El Shah, especially, okay? This is uh, Sirach Ecclesiastes 19 and 17. It says, admonish thy neighbor before thou threaten him, and not being angry, give place to the law of the Most High. And what law does that go back to? All right, Leviticus, the 19th chapter. So you're supposed to admonish your brother, warn your brother before you get mad, before you get all up in your feelings or anything like that. Warn your brother, man. Okay. And now sometimes, you know, that spirit's going to hop on you where you might not want to say anything because you may saying something you might feel like can potentially affect your brother. All right. So you got to know, you got to know what it is that's really bothering you. Once you examine what's the true source of what's bothering you, it helps you move about the certain circumstance correctly because you know, certain things is just like either, all right, I'm in my feelings. I need to get out my feelings. Let me, let me, let me rebuke those weak mortal thoughts. All right, I'm being fleshly right now. I'm being weak. Okay. Uh, you know, I need tougher skin. Or it could be a certain circumstance that truly did rub you the wrong way, truly did offend you. So if that's the case, and you know, you constantly find yourself thinking about it, and Satan's constantly poking at you to be like, yeah, that brother did that to you. Get mad at that brother. You know, hate that brother. That brother did that to you, right? Don't let that go. You know, handle that. You got to know, like, all right, I rebuke you, Satan. Pray to Yahweh Shemel Shai to give you the spirit to endure, withstand, and to do the right thing amongst the, the Lord and amongst brethren. Okay, and also pray to the Lord to give you the courage to speak up. Because sometimes, you know, you might not want to speak up to a brother because you, you fear that brother, man. You fear offending him or rubbing him the wrong way because you don't want to get judged by the Lord. But at the same time, it's like if it truly does bother you that much, maybe you should say something. OK, you know, maybe the Lord's putting that in your spirit so that it can open up an opportunity for more growth within the body. You know, more communication. OK, the Lord works in mysterious ways, man. So certain times, certain skirmishes and certain uh, circumstances get set up in the spirit. So. For opportunities of growth, man. You know? 
This is a Leviticus 19 and 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. So you're not supposed to hate a brother in your mind, in your heart. It says, thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor, admonish a friend, right? Warn him, rebuke him, and not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love the Lord, uh, love thy people, socket. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord Yahweh. Right. Okay. There it is right there. So, you know, we got to love our neighbor as ourselves, man. We can't be out here grudging and wanting to avenge and get our lip back because a brother did something to us, man. At the end of the day, you know, not that we wish any evil amongst brethren, but, you know, at the end of the day, Yahweh Bashem is going to be the one to settle the score, so to speak, man. The Lord going to handle it. You know, if, if a brother truly did rub you the wrong way, the Lord will admonish that brother. And Lord willing, he'll give the brother the spirit to recognize what he did and put the spirit on the brother to say, Salak him, man. But you got to even you got to even find it within yourself to forgive a brother, even if he doesn't apologize, man. You know, and that's just showing mercy, man. And we want the Lord to have mercy on us. So we need to be able to have mercy on our brother. Man. At the end of the day, you know, it's not about, you know, uh, uh, uh. You know, I'm right, you're wrong. Okay, it's, it's about maintaining the unity of the spirit in Yahweh Hashem Shai, man, and being at peace with one another, man. You know, and, and promoting the spirit of the Lord. Okay, not not doing things out of strife or vain glory. Let me get that precept too. Okay, because if you move like this, you can never lose when you're amongst the breath. All right, this is the Philippians two, starting at verse two. It says. Fulfill ye my joy. Let me start at verse one, actually. Philippians 2 and 1. If you move like this amongst brothers, you never lose. Okay. Philippians 2 and 1 says, If there be therefore any consolation in Mashiach, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. So you should be looking to promote brethren over yourself, man. You know, looking to make sure brothers is good before you. Verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Mashiach Yahweh Shai. Okay, so Yahweh Shai also has this mindset, man. That's why he died on the cross for us. He esteemed you know, uh, uh, our circumstances over his own, okay? And as well, I've got some precepts here, too. Um, this is uh, Matthew 18 and 10. It says, take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my father, which is in heaven. So you have to take heed, constant heed, diligent heed that you don't despise the Lord's little ones, man, because each brother got their own guardian angel. So, you know, how you might rub a brother the wrong way, you, you have to also take into account that you could rub his guardian angel the wrong way. You can offend his angel that that's that that's guards him through the spirit of prayer. And that angel go back to the Lord, tell him what you did, tell him how you are not being brotherly, your evil report. And guess what, man, that could be turned on to you, man. So you constantly want to tread lightly because you're not just looking at a brother. You're looking at the force that's behind him as well, man. Okay? This is a 1 Corinthians 12 and 25. It says that there should be no schism in the body, no separation, man. But that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Yeah, we're a body, man. We're a team through the spirit. OK. And, you know, at the end of the day, we have to bear each other's burdens, man. You know, and we also got to bear our own burdens. We have to hold our own weight. But you also got to help brothers out too, bear each other's burdens, man. You know, we can't have any schisms or any little separate separations in the spirit or in the body because of some petty shit, man. You know, you got to know when to just let shit go. Man. OK. Now, sometimes, you know, certain things do bother you and you want to speak up about it. And make get Mike want to get it off your chest. I get that. You know, you pray to the Lord first. Okay, then you go talk to your brother, man. All right. And there's a certain order and a certain way 
on how to go about a situation when it comes to addressing between one on one with a brother, man. All right, this is uh, um, Matthew 18 and 15. It says, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. That's another thing, too. All right, you got to go and talk to a brother first. Before you go behind that brother's back talking shit about that brother, you know, yeah, this brother, he, he did this, did, 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 but you ain't say not one word to him. You didn't say nothing to the brother, man. You didn't express to the brother how you truly felt. You know, it's like you got to come to that brother directly first, man. Okay? Like a man. One-on-one. You know, and it doesn't have to be strife or a screaming match or I'm right, you're wrong. You know, it's, it's just a matter of communication and finding that common ground of peace and unity in the spirit of Yahweh Shai and truth and sincerity, man. Okay? So Matthew uh, 18 and 15 Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. That's right. You also got to be in that spirit of being understanding. And if a brother's coming at you, telling you something that you potentially did wrong, you can't just be like, oh, well, I did this because this said in the third. All right. You might have a justification why you did what you did. But guess what? You still did it. You still wrong. So it's not about why you did it. It's just about correcting it, man. Okay. But nonetheless, the point being what, man? If a brother does anything against you, you know, you 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 admonish him, you rebuke him, okay? You learn to forgive him, man. Get that pre Luke, maybe. Um... Luke 17 and 3, it says, Take heed to yourselves if thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him, man. And that's the thing. You got to be merciful unto brethren. You want the Lord to have mercy on you. Here it is. And you're not willing to be merciful to another brother, man. That's not the way to go. You know, and that's another reason why you won't ever be able to find that common ground or that solution because you always had that grudge in your spirit. You never wanted to let it go. You never wanted to move forward, move past it. Okay, forgive the brother, you know. And, and your your understanding is going to be darkened. Your spiritual eyes are going to be darkened because if you hate your brother, you're in darkness, man, as the scriptures say. All right. That's uh First John. Let me get that real quick. First John 2 and 9, he that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light and there is an occasion of stumbling in him. All right. Because he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whither he goeth because that darkness hath blinded his eyes, man. That's right. So you don't want to be spiritually dark out here, man, especially not in these times. And a part of the way to get that spiritual darkness on you is to hate your brother. So the opposite will be what? To love your brother, man. Show show, show compassion towards one another. Practicing mercy with one another, man. All right? Go about it according to the way the instructors. Matthew 18 and 16. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee two or three. So I can two, take with thee one or two more. Then in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, Tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican, man. All right. And Lord willing, it doesn't have to ever get to that point. But, you know, hypothetically speaking, if it does, you know how to go about it because the scriptures teach us, teach us so. So if you and a brother have a disagreement, argument, you guys can't see the eye, eye to eye, go and get you two or three witnesses. Still, same thing. Go and tell it to the church, man. And at the end of the, at the, end of the day, once you get to that point, really... You know, you can go past level one, it'll get handled, you know, but let's say it goes all the way to the point where you got to tell the church, somebody got to find the load. Somebody got to take the load, man. Somebody got to be like, you know what, I, it's all good, Salakia, or vice versa, or oh, brother, it's all good, I give you, okay? You know, but if you both want to be stalemates and bump heads, you know, that's just not fruitful, man. It's not fruitful. Oh, this is uh, Matthew 18. And, um... Let's skip down to 
Verse 21, then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall I shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times? Yeah, how shall I say it unto him? I say not unto thee until seven times, but until 70 times seven, man. So time and time and time, time again, you're supposed to be merciful to your brother, man, as we wish the Lord to do the same for us. Okay, that's the Lord's prayer, man. You know, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgive us our trespasses. Forgive those who trespass against us. Right? Rough paraphrasing. All right? So how you want the Lord to forgive you, but you're not willing to show mercy. You know, like it says in the book of Sirach, the 28th chapter. Sirach, it's uh, 28 and 1. He that revenged shall find vengeance from the Lord, and he will surely keep his sins in remembrance. Forgive thy neighbor the hurt that he hath done unto thee. So shall thy sins also be forgiven when thou prayest. Right, so if you want your sins to be forgiven while you pray, you gotta forgive your brother, man. Okay, one man beareth hatred against another, and does he seek pardon from the Lord? He that he shews no mercy to a man which is like himself, and doth he ask forgiveness of his own sins? If he that is but flesh nourish hatred, who will entreat for pardon of his sins? Remember thy end, and let enmity cease. Remember corruption and death and abide in the commandments. You see, that's the point right there, man. All right. Remember the commandments and bear no malice to thy neighbor. Remember the covenant of the of the highest and wink at ignorance. And that's what you got to do. You got to be in that spirit of being able to wink at ignorance, being able to just let shit brush off your shoulders, so to speak, man. Verse 28, uh, Slok, Slok 28 and 8, Slok, you abstain from strife and thou shalt diminish thy sins. For a furious man will kindle strife. Yeah, you don't want to be in that spirit of getting quickly angry with a brother. You want to start strife and debate now. You are you mad. You want to argue this and other. No. Okay. Okay, because that can bring judgment. And I'm talking about judgment as in judgment upon you. This rock 29. A sinful man disquieteth friends and make a debate among them that be at peace. Yeah, you want to just be a troublemaker. Man. You're a sinful man. If you want to be an unrighteous troublemaker, man, okay. So you, so all this stems back from what, grudging and not forgiving your brother. Mark eleven and twenty five. It says, and when you stand praying, forgive. If you are against any, if you have ought against any, that your father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses, man. Okay, so we should constantly. Be looking to show mercy, you know, constantly practicing mercy amongst one another, man. And that'll take you a long way, okay? Because the Lord is dealing with a merciful individual. The scripture says, To the merciful, thou will shoot thyself merciful. To the upright, thou will shoot thyself upright. To the froward, thou will shoot thyself froward, you know? So it's all balanced at the end of the day. The most high, you know, you, you reap what you sow, man. You be an asshole to brothers, don't be surprised when the Lord be an asshole to you, you know, for lack of better words, man. Okay, you know, this is a math. You know, I think I brought that up already. It's lucky. Okay. Um, yeah. So I might just close out with this last precept in Matthew 18 and call it a night, you know. But also, I want to bring this out too. Okay. Actually, let me bring out Matthew 18 and bring out another thing and then bring out First Peter, Lord willing. Lord willing, and we'll call it a night. This is uh, Matthew 18. And um, verse 22, how should I say unto him? I say not unto thee until seven times, but until 70 times seven. Okay, that's right. And when you read that story, you know, it goes into the parable of what it's like to forgive your brother. But for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, segue to this definition right here that I have. What does it mean to tread carefully? You know, what tread carefully mean? It says to speak or behave carefully to avoid upsetting or causing offense to anyone, man. And that's what we need to do. What is another word for tread lightly? Be careful. Beware. Take heed. Precaution. Keep a sharp lookout. Guard against. Be on the alert. Tread carefully. Keep on one's toes. Look before you leap, man. Okay, so pretty much you got to be prudent to foresee the evil. You know, and especially when you're dealing with brother, you got to be prudent to see, okay, if I say this to that brother, how might he take it? Even if I might be messing around or joking, how might that brother take that? Okay, you know what? I'm going to be prudent. I'm just not going to say it, you know, because 
is better left unsaid to avoid strife, all right, or any type of possible problems. And that's treading lightly, man. That's being mindful of the potential dangers that can come from a certain circumstance if you offend a brother, man. You know? But um, let me go ahead and uh, read this last precept, Lord willing. I already call it a night. This is a uh, First Peter chapter three, son of verse eight. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion of one, of one of another, love as brethren. Be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrarywise blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called that ye should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days. Let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. That's what we ought to be doing, man. Always seeking the unity of the peace of Yahweh Shemashai. For, for the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Yeah, so if you offend a brother, you being wicked, guess what? The Lord's going to turn his face from away from you and he's going to hear the cry. All right, of the next brother being right to you just offended, man. That's why we ought to move with fear. Verse 13, and who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? All right, but if you suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled, man. And that's the thing. So if somebody wants to come up against you for you conducting yourself in a righteous fashion, don't worry about all that, man. Okay, you know, the scriptures speak about suffering wrongfully. And sometimes amongst the body, that's going to happen. Sometimes you're going to get blamed for a certain circumstance that you didn't do. Or you might, you know, um, wrongfully, but might, you know, uh, 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 not necessarily accuse you, but a brother might have, you know, his connotations towards you, so on and so forth. And it might not be so how the brother sees it. Well, guess what, man? Let your how about you try to deal with all that, man? Pray to the Lord for the Lord to deal it. And you hold your peace, man. That way you may be blameless. Okay? Call him up. You know? So, um, you know, that's really the point. Lord willing to be with us. I'm going to give all praise, honor, and glory to you. Yahweh, Bashem, Hashem, Bashem, Taka, Dajah, Dab, Honors, the Apostle of Israel, most of well, peace and blessings to the elect of Israel, man. Shalom, and above all. You know, the Lord doesn't play about his elect, man. So you want to watch how you move amongst brothers. You still want to have that level of high level of respect for one another and never get too comfortable to where you might offend. Shalom, and above all.